The secret endings of the Kingdom Hearts series are cool. They're a nice reward for players who have had the patience to defeat the biggest challenge of the respective game they're playing. Almost as if the developers are saying that they deserve to see what's coming next. And in my opinion, these previews are just as iconic as the scenes they're referencing, with them spawning endless conjecture until we see those events play out in the future. But I think what makes me enjoy these endings more than anything are the vibes. Starting with Kingdom Hearts 1, which has two secret endings, even though one is just a condensed version of the real secret ending, I personally believe what made these endings so memorable is the contrast from the game. Starting from the opening cinematic, Kingdom Hearts is a vibrant game, with the color palette, characters, environments, and even the UI design falling in line with this vision. Even with some of the more subdued worlds like Hollow Bastion and the End of the World having pops of color to keep the atmosphere somewhat light. But when we get to another side, another story deep dive, the color palette becomes muted and dull. The bombastic Kingdom Hearts font is replaced with a simple white text. We get introduced to a dark and melancholy city we've never seen. The music is different, the characters are different, the entire tone of the game feels like it's been shifted from its cheerful counterpart. The story itself feels like it's being told from a different perspective than what we've seen before. This is a perfect example of how to use color and tone to create a feeling of contrast between the two different parts of your story. In this case, it helps show the difference between the happy story that we've seen in Disney World and the slightly more serious tone Kingdom Hearts will take in the future. Not to mention that this was the first appearance of Roxas with Riku's, Kairi's, and Mickey's Kingdom Hearts 2 designs. Even though this is just a short scene, it's done so well that I feel like these small changes make a huge impact impact on how we perceive the story that's coming. The scene is visually stimulating, but there's a lot of detail that can be missed if you don't pay attention to what's going on. For example, there are several different types of water in this scene. Raindrops falling from the sky, waves crashing against the shoreline, and even water droplets suspended in mid-air, possibly representing all of the tears that will be shared between Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2. Even though this is just a short scene, it's done so well that I feel like like these small changes make a huge impact on how we perceive the story that's coming. And somehow they managed to pull it off again in Kingdom Hearts 2 with the birth by sleep scene. With us moving the setting from the depressing world that never was to the Keyblade graveyard. I think the thing that caught my attention the most back in the day is the countless amount of Keyblades because there were only seven confirmed Keyblade wielders at this point in time. With Sora, Riku, Kairi, Mickey, Yen Sid, Roxas, and most importantly, the lingering whale. So the idea of there being possibly hundreds if not thousands of Keyblade wielders at some point in time was mind blowing, but I think the biggest difference between this scene and Deep Dive is the ridiculous amount of confusion that it created due to the combination of familiar and brand new things. With people theorizing that Terra was an older Sora, that Aqua may have been Kairi, and that Ventus was Roxas, in addition to them having some amazing armor. But it doesn't end there because an old man who looks like the embodiment of evil comes out of nowhere dressed like Ansem with a mysterious kid who's dressed like Riku from when he relied on the darkness in Kingdom Hearts 1. With Kingdom Hearts itself looming over the battlefield, this scene was a confusing mess but it was exciting because fans like me were trying to piece together the puzzle. But the game doesn't give any answers until later in the story. However, another great thing about Birth by sleep is how it contrasts deep dive. In nearly all aspects, with the time going from day to night, rainy to clear skies, and even the result of the two scenes, they both represent a tragedy within the Kingdom Hearts series, but the outcomes of these two are completely different. With deep dive leading to Sora waking up, Roxas accepting his fate, and them teaming up to defeat Organization 13. But birth by sleep leads to Xehanort creating the chaotic circumstances around Kingdom Hearts 
one, playing into the theme of duality throughout the series with light and darkness, locations, and the dynamics between characters. However, there is still more to talk about with Kingdom Hearts 3's secret endings. That is unique compared to the others because there isn't any fighting. There are three secret endings in this game and they're more direct than the previous ones were, leading me to not get the same feeling that I had back in the day and I admit that this could be because I'm getting older, more cynical, in combination with other things. But I think the biggest reason why I feel that way is because we have more Kingdom Hearts than ever. Less than a year after Kingdom Hearts 3 was released, we got the Remind DLC and in less than a year after that, we got Melody of Memories which basically answered most of the questions from the original secret ending of base Kingdom Hearts 3. But with that being said, these endings do two amazing things that I can't wait to see play out. Starting with the 104 building that comes out of the World Ends With You series, which is only the second time a non-Kingdom Hearts character has appeared in a secret ending with Mickey appearing in the previous two. Meaning that it's pretty much confirmed that the characters from The World Ends With You will play a prominent role within KH4 or at the very least make an appearance. Then there's Yozora, a character that we've seen a bit of that could go in so many directions, with him possibly being an alternate version of Sora, his similar appearance to Riku, his mission to save Sora even though he fights Sora after revealing that information. But the craziest thing is that Yozora might be the original version of Noctis from Nomura's vision of Final Fantasy Versus 13 before it transformed into Final Fantasy 15. Meaning that it's possible that the entire purpose of this new important character is so Tetsuya Nomura has an excuse to make Final Fantasy Versus 13 under the Vernum Rex title, which I find hilarious. The secret endings of Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, and Kingdom Hearts 3 are cool for their unique vibes and aesthetics. Each cinematic teases what is to come in the future installments of this series, leaving players with a sense of excitement and anticipation. The secret endings of Kingdom Hearts are a testament to the series' commitment to storytelling and world building. They show that there is much more to the Kingdom Hearts universe than what meets the eye, and I can't wait to see more. So if you enjoyed Enjoy my videos, please like, subscribe, and share my content. Also, if you wish to support my work directly, becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon subscriber are the best ways to do so. So with that being said, thank you for watching and if you want to see another video essay, that's on screen right now.